Now let's look at how to find the minimum sample size to estimate a mean. Now remember, in the formula for confidence interval, I told you that the part where you have z times standard deviation over root n is called margin of error, and we use e to represent it. Given a c confidence level and a margin of error, that is e, the minimum sample size n needed to estimate the population mean is n equals z times standard deviation over margin of error all squared. In this topic, we want to look at how to find a minimum sample size. So this is a formula we are going to be using. This formula was derived from the formula for margin of error. Remember, I told you that margin of error, that is E, is equal to Z times standard deviation over root N, isn't it? So let's make N the subject. Now to make N the subject, the LCM here is root N, isn't it? So let's multiply both sides by root N. So when we multiply both sides by root n, we have root n times e is equal to z times standard deviation over root n times root n. Now this root n will cancel out this root n. Root n times e will give you e root n. Multiplication is commutative. And then z times standard deviation, you still have z times standard deviation. But we want to make n the subject. So to make n the subject, we must do away with every other thing affecting n. Now, when you look at this e, this e is a coefficient of root n. So first, let's do away with the e. So to do away with the e, we divide both sides by what? By e. Now, when we divide both sides by e, this e will cancel out this e. That is the main reason we are dividing both sides, so that we can get rid of this e at the left. So now we have root n equals z times standard deviation divided by e. Also, to do away with this square root, the best thing we can do is to square both sides. So when you square both sides, the square will cancel out the square root. Okay. Then you have n to be equal to, since you've squared both sides, this side will be affected by a square. So you have n to be equal to z times standard deviation over e, all square. So that's where we derive this formula here from. Okay. You can also write it n is equal to z squared times standard deviation square divided by e squared. Whenever you have a question, it says the level of confidence given in the question that will determine what your z will be, isn't it? But there are some level of confidence that are very common in every question. So I'm going to give you those level of confidence and then tell you their z scores. Then you make sure you keep them, okay? Now, whenever a question gives you level of confidence to be 90%, okay, then your z should be 1.645 or 1.65 and then whenever a question gives you a level of confidence to be 95 percent then the z score should be 1.96 also whenever a question gives you level of confidence to be 98 percent then the z score should be 2.33 and then when a question gives you level of confidence of 99 percent the z score should be 2.575 okay a question can give you 80% and others, but these four are more common, okay? So it's good you keep their z-scores. And then this 1.645, you can approximate it to 1.65, okay? And then this 2.575, you can approximate it to 2.58. So let's take some questions on this. Example 1 says, a scientist wishes to estimate the average depth of a river. He wants to be 99% confident that... The estimate is accurate within two feet. From a previous study, the standard deviation of the depth measured was 4.33 feet. Find the minimum sample size needed to estimate the mean. The question says, find the minimum sample size needed to estimate the mean. So to solve this, we recall the formula. The formula says n equals z times standard deviation over e all squared. Now, it means that to get the value of n, we need the z score, we also need the standard deviation, we need the what, the margin of error. Now, when you look at the question, the question gave us 99% confidence. And remember, for 99% confidence under this topic, the z score should be 2.58 or 2.575, isn't it? So, meaning we know our z already to be 2.575 or 2.58. And then the standard deviation was also given as 
because the question says the standard deviation of the depth measured was 4.33 feet so the standard this is the standard deviation now when you look at the question the question says he wants to be 99 percent confident that the estimate is accurate within two feet whenever you have a statement like this within two feet within five feet you should know that this is the margin of error okay so our margin of error is two so let's substitute that in the formula so we are going to have what so the z is 2.58 times the standard deviation is 4.33 and the margin of error is two so take your calculator and check 2.58 times 4.33 divided by two you get 5.5857 then square okay so when you check 5.5857 square you get 31.2 now this is not the final answer so whenever you get n in decimal make sure you run the answer up okay so you run the answer to 32 in this topic it is a must for you to run it up okay so that will be 32 so the minimum sample size needed to estimate the mean is 32 so that's the answer to this. So let's look at example two. Example two says, a pizza shop owner wishes to find a 90% confidence interval of the true mean cost of a large plain pizza. How large should a sample be if she wishes to be accurate within $0.15? A previous study showed that the standard deviation of the price was $0.26. So to solve this, you recall the formula. The formula says n is equal to z times standard deviation over e all square, isn't it? Now, according to the question, for 90% confidence, remember the z score is 1.645 or 1.65. And then the question says to be accurate within 0.15. So whenever you see a statement like this, you should know that is the margin of error. Okay. And then the question also gives us standard deviation of 0.26. So we just substitute it in the formula. So we have 1.645, which is a z-score, times standard deviation, which is 0.26, divided by the margin of error, which is 0.15, all squared. So when you check 1.645 times 0.26, divided by 0.15, you get 2.851, then squared. So 2.851 squared will give you 8.128. Now remember, you won't leave your answer in this form. You must run it up. So when you run 8.128 upward to the nearest whole number, you get 9. So the sample size required is what? It's 9. 